Hey guys, what is up? Alex Scott here with Concertini.com coming at you with another gear review. Although this one is not going to be a typical gear review. This is the new, newer, new gear, however you say it, NW1500. This microphone, oh, this microphone. Uh, I bought this for $25, brand new. Um, these kinds of mics are all over Amazon and eBay, um, purporting themselves to be full, complete, large diaphragm, studio condenser, vocal mics, um, with all the trimmings. They've come with multiple stand options and pop filters and shock mounts and... Uh, in addition to the mic itself, um, and all for the astonishing low price of like $19.99, $24.99, $29.99, that kind of a thing. And uh, I'm going to review this mic for you guys today. I, I don't normally do negative reviews, but this one's going to be A, extremely negative, and B, kind of a forewarning to a lot of you. Um, I know it can be incredibly tempting to, you know, go out and you, you might look around online or, or be in a store somewhere and you would see something like this. And if you're just getting started in recording, you go, wow, 25 bucks. Well, man, if it sounds even decent, you know, the, it might be worth buying three or four of these things. Maybe I can finally get enough good large diaphragm mics to be able to record a whole drum kit or I hate to burst bubbles. I hate to poop on parties and rain on parades, but no, you cannot. I paid $25 for this mic and I would use the shock mount. That is about it. This thing is an absolute piece of junk. Um, we will listen to it uh, as a voiceover mic here in a second. Um, I'll plug it in just so you guys can hear how bad it sounds, but it is noisy. It is very mid-range honky. There's no low end. There's no top end. Um, it's extremely cloudy sounding and just, it sounds awful. It sounds absolutely awful. So, I just wanted to, uh, you know, again, this is less of a review as it is kind of a, a warning of if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. And unfortunately, there's a lot of companies uh, that are buying these mics, rebranding them. I'm not sure what factory in, I mean, I would imagine in China these are being made in. I've seen them under a lot of different brand names. Um, New Year is or newer. I, I have no idea how to even say this brand name. Um, it seems to be the most commonly advertised one, um, but I do see them under under other names. And, you know, I spent the 25 bucks mainly just to uh, to experiment and see what exactly this thing was selling. Because I myself was curious, you know, if it's a good sounding mic for 25 bucks, you know, hey, I could probably find some use for it. I didn't think it was going to sound amazing, but it really sounds genuinely awful. So let's go ahead and plug, we're going to plug it into a nice preamp into a Neve 1073 clone. Now let's talk into it for a second. You guys can really hear just how bad it is. Okay guys. So we are now talking into our newer, new year, whatever, NW1500. As you can hear, um, it does not sound good. Uh, it's boxy. It's weird. There's very little top end detail. There's a ton of like interference noise. Um, it's just a really gross sounding mic. You know, again, uh, you get what you pay for here. This thing was 25 bucks and yeah, it came with some handy accessories, but, um, as you can hear from the quality of my speaking right now, I mean, the other audio that you've been hearing in this video is the onboard camera on an iPhone. So that should say a lot. Uh, this is probably a mic you're going to want to avoid, I guess, in an absolute pinch on a super non-critical source, something like percussion, you know, a shaker or something, you could maybe get away with it. But there's a ton of background noise in it, depending on where you are. It's not shielded very well um, from external electronic interference. So, ugh, yuck. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. As you can hear, uh, it sounds like just total junk. <laughs> um, I want to use much harsher words than I am, but YouTube will demonetize us if I do. It's, it's a piece of junk. Don't be fooled by marketing literature and shiny photos and, you know, crazy descriptions on, on sites and stuff. You know, the only reason I would see buying something like this I mean, this pop screen is, is kind of slick. Um, it clips on, clips off kind of a thing. 
uh, and I'm you know it it is a, a usable pop screen. It does its job. So if you happen to have maybe a blue mic or something with this design that you could mount this pop screen onto, maybe that's useful. Uh, the shock mount is okay. Um, it is plastic top to bottom, but you know if you have a shock or a, a microphone that will fit in the diameter of this shock mount and you need a new shock mount for it, I guess you could buy this and just use the shock mount. Um, it did come with this little plastic base stand, uh, which is fine. You know, if you need a little desktop stand, it, it, it functions. It does what is advertised on the box. Um, it did come with this, which is actually pretty slick. And in my opinion, this is worth the 20 bucks. Um, you know, it's a little kind of radio style uh, arm that mounts. There's a little clamp on my desk over here that it mounts to. And this will support much bigger and heavier mics. Um, and so I use it to do voiceover. And, you know, it's a new ear. This thing is pretty decent. Uh, the clamp is a little junky, but it works. It holds it in place. And it is actually quite a sturdy arm. Um, I've been using it for about a year, and I attach bigger mics, like a Rode NT1A or something like that. will work on here just fine. So that's kind of cool. But the one thing in the whole package that doesn't work is the microphone. <laughs> so if, if it were, if, if they literally just took all this stuff away and we just had, you know, get rid of that. Uh, we just had these, and it was 25 bucks. Okay, sure, that makes sense. But the fact that they've included this hilarious just piece of crap mic in the whole thing, and that's like the center centerpiece, you know, I, I actually get a little bit worried that somebody out there is going to, you know, who's totally brand new to recording is going to order something like this and then think that this is how a studio microphone should sound. And it just plain isn't. Um, so, you know, again, word to the wise, fair warning. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. You do need to spend like a bare minimum. You know, there are some very affordable mics out there that sound great. The MXL 990 comes to mind. It's a fantastic sounding mic. We're going to do a video on that mic really soon here on, on the channel. Does it sound as good as like a $3,000 Neumann or something? Well, no, of course not, because it's 50 bucks brand new Guitar Center. But that, you know, it at least sounds good enough to get a really good recording out of if you if you know how to use it and you've got it in a good room, on a good instrument, in the right spot, all that kind of stuff. But for $25, you know, and then all of these extra accessories, it's just not... If you need this stuff, go for it. This is now literally, it sits up in a windowsill in my studio and is just there to look pretty. That's, that's literally all it does. Um... I would be likely to, you know, use this as a prop. Maybe if we were making a film of some kind and needed to throw a microphone off of a building or run one over with a car for comedic effect or something, I'd have no problems at all using this guy. Um, but yeah, guys, you know, use your brains. Use, use your common sense. Um, you're not going to get a great quality studio mic and a shock mount and two different stands and a pop filter for $25. You can get a good shock mount for $25, you're in the green. So the idea that you could buy something like this, get all these accessories, and it's going to be actually usable, I was optimistic and sadly was proven wrong. So avoid like the plague, avoid all microphones like this. Um, other model numbers that I've seen around, regardless of the brand, is like the BM800, the BM1000. Um, there's a lot of mics, you know, again, like these from newer and other companies that have equally strange names on Amazon. Um, it's all just rebranded OEM junk. Um, not to say that stuff that comes out of China is bad. A lot of my gear are clones that are, are manufactured in Asia, and they are doing some truly incredible stuff. But this definitely falls into the category of a waste of time, a waste of money. <laughs> just don't do it. But what do you guys think of these mics? Have you tried them? Have you used them? With most of our other products, we are trying to put links in the description below where you can go and buy them. I'm not going to do that because I don't want you guys to buy this. You're going to waste your money. Save up 50 bucks and go buy an MXL 990. Uh, it's going to come in a cord cardboard box and not come with all these fancy accessories. Um, but it's going to actually sound like a real proper microphone. So um, maybe we'll leave a link to that in the description where you can go to Amazon and check out the MXL 990. That's my personal favorite starter mic. Um, for people who are new to recording because it is really affordable and it does sound pretty good um, But yeah, don't don't bother with this thing. It's it's just a piece of junk
Um, what do you guys think, though? Definitely leave any thoughts or comments you have. Maybe you've used one of these mics. If you've managed to get a decent sound out of one, I would love to know how. Um, but, you know, uh, just my personal experience speaking here. So, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, my name is Alex Scott with ConcertDini.com. Feel free to leave your thoughts and comments down below, and we will see you in the next video.